Everyone's self-scouting themselves. Joe Judge picking up on the trend that Chris, we're, we're, it's every time I hear it now, I think of you and more and more people are saying it. Maybe it happened all the time and I just never noticed it until I started hanging around you. No, but, uh, no, but I think I started slightly, it. I think I started slightly it. redundant, but we love it. <laughs> no, we have to self scout ourselves at all times. And that's what Joe judge is trying to do. Trying unsuccessfully so far. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, he's in a tough spot. I mean, of course his team's not very good. We know that they're, they're somewhat of a rebuild type mode right now. And they're playing the 49ers or, yeah, a team that was banged up but still is more talented and better than they are with a, you know, an incredibly good coaching staff to go along with it. And I don't know, Mike. I mean, I know you. we were paying attention to that on Sunday, but it's 16-6. to 6. It looked like the momentum was all on the 49ers side at that point. And I have no, like, no issue with him going for it there. I don't. Down 10 points against that football team right there, and momentum had totally seemed to be back on the 49ers' side. Um, yeah, that wasn't, like, crazy. You know, that that's one of those two where I just get annoyed with fans and, like, the media because if he punts it away, everyone's going to go, well, why did he punt it away? I mean, they're up by 10, and you're seeing the 49ers are driving the ball down the field at will. you gotta you got to match it and be aggressive. And it's just where I was like, football fans sometimes, we can't have it both ways. The game's not perfect. And uh, I got, yeah. Well, got, I, I remember, I remember yeah. last year when Pat Shermer was the coach, he would punt in that situation to help keep the final score from being an embarrassment. Right. So it looked good in the newspaper, right? Instead of being aggressive and trying to salvage the game, let's just get out of here with a score that isn't going to be a humiliation exactly. when it shows up tomorrow morning right. for the casual fan that wasn't paying attention. Joe Judge trying to turn a, a, a defeat into an opportunity to at least make the game close. Although... I feel bad for Giants fans and Jets fans. They the, the teams are both horrendous this year. I think it's the first time they're they're also 0 and 3 at the same time since 1996. Uh, so not a good time to be a New York sports fan. Although yeah. I guess if you're because you're you're one or the other. So if you're a Giants fan, you're happy the Jets suck. If you're a Jets fan, you're happy the Giants suck. And the 49ers 2 and 0 at MetLife Stadium, as Josh Alper of PFT pointed out over the weekend. They may be the only team to win two games at MetLife Stadium this year. And they won in a unique statistical way, Chris. Check this out. No punts, no turnovers, and 2.7 yards per rush. It's only happened twice before the teams had no punts, no turno turnovers, and three yards or less per rushing attempt. But it was just methodical. It was grinding. And that's what this 49ers offense is. Yeah, it is. You're 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 exactly right. And it showed its versatility, too. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we can't beat you up on first and second down with the great Shanahan run scheme and all that. The Giants got a lot of big people on their defensive line. So I wasn't shocked that they slowed it down a little bit. But I think the, like, the thing that the 49ers are going to be impressed by and, like, where it is a t statistical oddity to me not running for that many yards and still put up that many points and not punt the ball, they killed it on third down. That's what they did. I mean, Shanahan was amazing in this football game. The Giants went in with the right approach. Like, let's make Nick Mullins have to win the football game. Let's not let them, you know, run the ball down our throats and he doesn't have to do anything. So they did a good job slowing that aspect down. But Shanahan had a lot of ways to expose the Giants in the secondary. He did a great job there. You know, had his all usual reverses and screens and things like that, too, to keep them off balance. And Nick Mullins... Uh, he he played really good football. So it wasn't pretty early, but they kind of found their mojo. And then once they found their mojo, it was pedal to the metal on the defense and offensive side of the ball, and th that was that. Let's hear from Kyle Shanahan, who can seize that. Remember the Snoopy trophy that they gave to the winner yeah. of the Jets-Giants game? He's right. taking that Snoopy trophy home. He beat both teams. Here he is talking about his offense from Sunday. Uh, he was very efficient um, and made all the plays that were there and then made a number of plays that weren't there. Um, extended a few, um, had a few big third downs, um, a few big second alongs. Um, he um, kept us on the field for a while and played tough and I uh, was very impressed with him. And each time I watch it, I feel stronger about that. That's uh, obviously Shanahan referring to quarterback Nick Mullins, who took the place of Jimmy Garoppolo, proving that he can run the offense, he can run the system. It puts a little heat on Jimmy G, number one, to get his butt back on the field. Right. Number two, to play better when he comes back because, again, I think this is a critical year for Jimmy G. And we saw not a great performance week one against Arizona. Their schedule softened early. There's going to be some tests coming up. When he's healthy, when he's back, he's going to have to play well against some of these NFC West teams 
or uh, how can you not consider your options? They considered one of their options this past year with That's Tom right. Brady. Maybe they consider their options going forward. Well, I, I think this does like put a little pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, not that he's like, oh no, my job's in jeopardy, but you know, you just you see like the 49ers, it's more than just the quarterback. The team is good. The coach is amazing. They can move the ball and put up yards. I mean, even when they were going three and thirteen and six and ten early on in Shanahan's tenure, they were exciting on offense. You know, they just had, you know, a CJ Beathard who was careless with the football and they were young and they were learning their way. So uh, I, there is something to that. It's a shame for Jimmy G because in that Jets game where he got hurt, he was really playing well. He really was and was battling through the injury at that time as he was playing well. So hopefully this doesn't set him back a little bit. Um, but, you know, the way this schedule is sh shook out for the 49ers, it's just it's very favorable. I mean, the Eagles this week, they're a team that's kind of on the ropes. We'll see where Jimmy G is for this. But And then I believe the week after, that's another easy game where you just sit there and go – Wow, I want to say it's the Dolphins or somebody like that 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 week, right? Yeah, there it is. It's the Dolphins. So, you know, even if they lost this week, they're better than the Dolphins. They could be sitting there going, "Man, we've lost half of our damn team and like the mash lineup here, and we're still three and two and just about to get healthy." Because you're right, that next stretch, whoa! Oh my gosh! Whoa! Oh my gosh! Rams, Patriots, Seahawks, Packers, Saints, Rams, Bills. Good whoa. luck with that. Yeah, get your wins while you can, 49ers, and you can watch. The 49ers hosting the Philadelphia Eagles Sunday Night Football this week. That precision offense. And I'm not going to count out the 49ers because I believe in your guy, Kyle. I think he's a, a budding Bill Belichick. He's finding a way to win. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.